Hello, hello, my lovely angels. This is your girl Sim back with another episode of The Sims Squad. Hi! So, this episode is continuing my part two, continuing the part one as part two <laughs> of my most beloved 10 out of 10 Middle Eastern fragrances. The first one was more of uh, the newer fragrances I have, the ones I got to try for some time before I revealed them to you. And these are like my OGs that I've been using for many years or some of them are still fairly new but they have at least completed six months with me and I can confidently say that these are my 10 out of 10 which means I will be repurchasing this when they finish and then again and then again yeah so let me start with the first one with the uh, Swiss Arabian again it's the Casablanca can you see how much I finished already Despite of all the other perfumes I have behind me, I kept reaching for this again and again and again. This is like the perfect gourmand fragrance to me. This is a very amber caramel perfume and then it has this very nice fruits in it which doesn't make you feel sick or nothing too tart or nothing that is sickly. You know what I mean? Like sometimes like these kind of perfumes can go wrong like a lot. And I had avoided this perfume like the plague when I heard that this has apple note in it. And I was like, nah. And then I just took the leap one day because it was on offer. I keep saying this, I'm brown. And when I see offers, I go for it, you know. On Fragrantica, this has got 4.24. It smells kind of like Ebar of uh, Rasasi Kasamat uh, collection. But still, it's very different. The Ebar was more of like a biscuit, you know, lotus biscuit. This one is more like... I don't even know what to call this. It smells like cooked apples, you know, like cooked apples. It smells like a dessert, but at the same time, it doesn't smell too realistic dessert that you can't really wear it on yourself. This retails for US dollars 55. The top notes for this are apple and grapes. Now, see, this is the thing that when I heard apple and grapes, and these are two notes that I usually do not like. Berries, give me berries as much as you want. You want me to give, give me citruses, I'll take it. But like when it comes to like grape and apple, I'm like, mm, you know, like, should I... And that's what scared me. The middle notes of white woods, patchouli and iris, and the base notes of caramel, amber, suede, musk and peru balsam. So it has a whole lot of like balsam, the res resins. The caramel of course is like one of the most prominent notes in here. The suede is like barely there. It just does something to it like 0.5% of the entire comp uh, the composition. And that suede, I think that note is like really important in here because it just gives it that little bit of that leather bitterness, you know, it's like just a hint of it. It's not even, I can't even call it like it's suede. And then of course, it's like super woody. So it's like, just think of it being a very ambery, uh, fruity in the base. Then it gets woody with like a lot of caramel. Oh my God. Like I milked this perfume <laughs> during fall winter. I went nuts. I was wearing it every single day, going to work, going out, like at home. I just kept gravitating towards this perfume and I knew that this perfume will get over soon. I'm going to still wear it in summer as well, maybe at home, maybe if I'm going out where it's going to be indoors, I'm going to continue wearing this. This bottle is going to get like over like really, really fast. I don't particularly like the bottle, but it doesn't bother me too much. It's just a cap that bothers me, you know, but otherwise this perfume is A1. I'm not going to tell you the rating because they're all a 10 out of 10. There is no Middle Eastern vibe check in this. It's all zero. It's very, very... Uh, gourmand modern fragrance. The celebrity I thought of was uh, Tara G. P. Henson. She just looks like she smells like gourmand goodness, you know. The next one is of course Kasamat Ibar. <laughs> Look at the amount of uh, how much I've used it up and I've been actually trying not to go towards this perfume because I've just used it a lot. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna end up wearing this today. This smells like a biscuit, a lotus biscuit. This one is classified as a gourmand. It's called 4.46 on Fragrantica, which is like, means it's loved by everybody. Retails for USD 40 and they say it resembles to Casablanca, but I don't think so. Yes, they're in the same family. They're very close. Uh, they could be sisters, but they're definitely not the same. The top notes for this are green apple and lemon. Middle notes of orris root, damask rose, jasmine and lotus. And then your base notes are vanilla, praline, tonka bean and musk. So yes, the notes do kind of signify uh, the fact that it should smell something like uh, Casablanca, but just because of that lack of caramel and it having praline instead, it feels less sticky sweet and more of mature sweet. 
it smells more like a biscuit like that's the best way i can tell you the other one was like an apple pie with the crust and everything this is more of like a lotus biscuit this smells a little bit more edible now initially that strong um, green apple and lemon notes they're actually not that strong but they're still prominent you can smell them like very very well but they go away within like 10 15 minutes to reveal your middle notes which are very powdery biscuity you know that kind of scent and along with like a lot of sweet notes in in the dry down this also lacks all the woods that, that are there in uh, Casablanca this just has musk in the end and like a lot of sweet notes this would again be suitable for <laughs> fall winter but that's just the kind of perfumes I gravitate towards it's either a noir perfume or a gourmand perfume that's my jam you know what I mean so you guys might be thinking like Celine you're presenting all winter fragrances well strap yourselves in because <laughs> the more gourmand fragrances are coming up this is a stunning fragrance to me it'll always be in my collection and the celebrity I'd given this to was Sarah Highland. Next we have Silky Rose from Latafa. This of course had to be in my collection. This is something I gravitate towards when I'm not like really thinking too much about what perfume I should wear. It's a super super fresh very lychee and pink rose dominant perfume. Like if you want to smell like lychee and uh, a cold pink rose go for this one. It smells like a drink. It smells like a drink that has like fresh lychee chunks in it and it's rose water it's sweet it's effervescent it's very very pretty it literally like think of a person wearing this these colors you know and like the whole vibe of it like being uh, translucent and that's how you feel when you smell this fragrance and the fact that they made this perfume bottle like translucent it kind of looks like how the lychee fruit looks like right it's the pink shell and then it's all soft and the, the fleshy thing inside it's like very translucent and beautiful and juicy I really do not have to think too much about this perfume because it just instantly makes you feel fresh light and cold and in summer this is like one of those fragrances I gravitate towards a lot I just want to go for it and you know feel pleasant feel light feel happy you know it's just a nice happy fragrance wear this feel good the top notes for this are rose pink pepper and lychee middle notes of rose musk and lily of the valley and the base notes of musk, vanilla and patchouli. And this is supposed to be the dupe of the favorite by Penn Halligans. On Fragrantica, it's got 4.52, which is a lot. People love this perfume. Like, there's no Middle Eastern vibe in this. It's a stunning perfume. Recently, I changed my rating of this to 10 out of 10. Very pretty. By the way, like, I've used it quite a bit, but I don't know why this is. This perfume is just not denting. Or I don't know if it's the shape of the bottle or something that makes it, like, look like i'm not using it and when it goes down probably it'll finish faster because when i spray this i spray this a lot the celebrity i had chosen for this was selena gomez next we have the stark opposite of this perfume <laughs> it's nasheed by latafa this is your dupe for ani by nishine this is a woody oriental the weirdest combination of um, a vanilla with any other notes that you can think of this is like eucalyptus frankincense and vanilla this is what i feel notes say otherwise you know it's, it feels like you took like a piece of pine wood or something dropped a few drops of uh, essential oils of frankincense and um, a little bit of eucalyptus and some like essence of vanilla and that's what it smells like and if you pick up that piece of pine wood and smell it that's how it smells like now yeah this one is a very polarizing scent so i don't tell people go and blind buy this because that maybe that eucalyptus medicinal kind of scent maybe people might not like it to me this unique combination of combining those woody um, aromatic notes along with like vanilla the top notes for this are gaia wood middle notes of nutmeg and the base notes of sandalwood cashmere and frankincense actually not pine wood sandalwood is the right example so take the piece of sandalwood add like frankincense a lot of it a little bit of eucalyptus and then pour vanilla extract or vanilla essence all over it and smell that piece of sandalwood that's what it smells like it's a very 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 beautiful fragrance to me it makes me feel cold it makes me feel relaxed it makes me it just gives me a very calming vibe and at the same time the perfume also smells very powerful when people smell this on you would they think you're wearing like Vicks vapor or something <laughs> maybe I don't know but to me this is like just the fact that there's so much vanilla in this maybe I would add like some more vanilla to this like vanilla 28 or something and then wear it but honestly, I would shamelessly wear this. I don't care if people think I'm wearing Vicks Vapor or something. Very beautiful fragrance. This again, like you can wear it like any weather, all time of the day. Doesn't matter. Next, a 
course, if we are talking about Latafa, this perfume had to come up. Now, before you guys like think about it, I know it's a polarizing scent. Not everybody will like it. This is the Amethyst by Latafa from their Badial Oud range. This is literally an Arabian queen, not princess, an Arabian queen who's dressed up like in a cloak, a velvet cloak of this color. She's wearing like gold jewelry. She's done like very strong makeup, like with a lot of kohol, a lot of like contouring and everything, glitz glam, and then she's wearing this perfume. This is supposed to be the dupe for Atomic Rose. I think Infinite Rose by Mason Alhambra was a closer dupe to uh, Initio's uh, Atomic Rose than this one. A lot of people get this rubbery scent from it. I don't. Maybe initially there was some, but now it's like completely gone. On Fragrantica, this has got 4.23. And it's called an Amber Vanilla. But to me, this is an Oriental Rose. The top notes for this are Bergamot, Pink, Peppercorn and Blackcurrant. Heart notes of Turkish Rose, Bulgarian Rose and Jasmine. And the base notes of Agarwood, Amber and Vanilla. So it does have Oud, it does have Rose, but doesn't smell like the typical Middle Eastern Rose Oud combination, you know. The first of all doesn't have musk and doesn't have saffron so that kind of takes a different turn but it has that freshness of bergamot the black currant darkness then your pink peppercorn and like they have two different roses it's just such a stunning stunning fragrance this is definitely rose heavy and a little bit less of jasmine it just feels like a very royal very uh, what do you call it it's a very heavy fragrance it's a very very strong heavy fragrance it's also very heady so if you're not used to heady fragrance, it gives you migraines, it makes you feel like throwing up, don't wear this perfume. It is just a very, very beautiful, beautiful fragrance. All I can recommend is when you're using this perfume for the first time, use only one spray and then you try and see how you feel. You know, if you feel like topping it up more and if you start feeling used to it, then you can go for like five sprays like me, <laughs> like a psycho. <laughs> this truly feels dark. It feels noir. It feels very... Uh, vam uh, like vampy again like a queen who is a little bit evil or something but like very 101 1001 arabian nights you know it's, it gives me that image like living in a lush tent in the desert under the night sky but this woman is very attractive this queen is like the queen of hearts queen of soldiers queen of everybody you know the celebrity i thought for for this was eva green from dark shadows like I would just imagine her character in that, like the witch, she would be like wearing a perfume like this to seduce people. It's very alluring, very, very seductive. This is definitely going to draw attention towards you. If you don't want attention, if you don't want men like looking to, towards you and like trying to get whiffs in, from the air off you, don't wear this perfume. Beautiful fragrance. I think all of you already know it's one of my favorites and it's going to always stay in my collection. Next we have one from, let's pick Khalaj. Okay. Hadlash The Proposal. This is my go-to perfume when I want to <laughs> smell like a freshly opened gift, you know, a, like a beautiful Dior dress or something. This is like so Play-Doh-y doll head scent. So first of all, if you do not like that Play-Doh doll head scents, don't go for it. Kind of smells also like vintage makeup. So it smells like vintage makeup combined with the Play-Doh-y scent, right? Now, anything that smells like Play-Doh, Ever since the Dior perfumes, <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. So it does give me a very Dior kind of vibe. Funny enough, it doesn't have any notes that would suggest that it would have the Play-Doh notes because it doesn't have almond, it doesn't have, oh, what's the other note? Play-Doh note, you know. Uh, the top notes for this are blackcurrant, bergamot and orange flower. Middle notes of tuberose and orris. And the base notes of cedarwood, vanilla and dry amber. The only thing that's making me feel like the play doh ness it could be the woods. It is such a unique fragrance. It's such a head turner. You wear this, everybody looks at you. you. I wore this in the elevator once, like initially when I was testing this out, I was wearing it like everywhere. And then I put it and I went to the office and my goodness, like I could see people like turning and looking at me in the elevator. And our elevator is like quite crowded. We normally have like at least nine to 10 people, you know, like crammed up when I'm going to work. It's a tower and it's like, when you're in the peak time, people are like just like going into the elevator. and everybody was turning and making trying to make eye contact with me you know because they wanted to see who's wearing this perfume now again this perfume is polarizing okay so if you do not like that play doh doll head kind of scent you are not going to like this perfume but if you like different strange scents but they smell good i can tell you one thing it smells very good just that doll head thing right the celebrity i gave this to was scarlett johansson i was like all the way like her in a velvet gown i would be like this is her this retails for 55 dollars 
It's not mentioned on Fragrantica. Fragrantica gets your act together. <laughs> Where are all the perfumes from Khadlaj? This one is, I, I would say it's unisex, but it would smell much, much better on a woman. Just like Dior's uh, Hypnotic Poison. You know, I know a lot of men who wear that. And I smell it on a man once and I asked him, what I, what's the perfume you're wearing? Because it smelled very familiar, but I could just not pinpoint which men's fragrance it was. And he said it was Hypnotic Poison. And I was so surprised that it was smelling so good on a man. But he was like dressed up very well, like in suit and everything. I feel this would work the same way. If a person is like well dressed in a suit and everything, a man can pull this off. Otherwise, it's a unisex leaning very feminine perfume. This perfume also smells very powerful and strong. Yeah, so it is like an alpha woman for sure. Next, we have another one from Khadlaj and of course this was going to come. Harim Al Sultan, the perfume spray. We all know the oil went viral and I was so happy when they came up with the perfume spray because I was like, I'm not going to like be able to use the oil on daily basis. If I want to just grab a perfume quickly, wear it and leave, especially me in the morning, I snooze and snooze and snooze the alarm. And then when it's time to like, I know I'm going to get late for sure. If I don't hurry up and get dressed up like super fast, I'm going to be late. So in the end, when I'm like grabbing a perfume, I need it to be not an oil, you know, and this <laughs> is perfect for that. Now, this is not listed, of course, on Fragrantica, but the oil is listed on Fragrantica. And this is just like a lighter version of the oil. A little bit more wearable I would say like because this one has more heavy floral notes that transition from gummy bears to florals happens quicker the oil had got 4.26 so I'm assuming this would be a little bit more 4.4 or something if Fragrantica has it listed the notes are also slightly different from uh, the perfume oil the top notes for this are rose and bergamot middle notes of nutmeg jasmine and amber and the base notes of agarwood sandalwood and patchouli if you want to know how it smells Open a packet of Gar uh, Haribo's uh, gummy bears, put your face into it. <laughs> the initial opening is that and then it moves into like these very pleasant floral notes. I would, I'm saying floral notes and not specific flowers because you can't really identify any of the flowers. So just think of like a very artificial fruity note like the gummy bears and then it moves on to a floral note. Let's just call it a floral note because it's a mixture of fl flowers that you can't really identify. And then it moves on to it being a slightly woody fragrance and a bit of musk. It's beautiful. It's refreshing in summer. This is going to shine like crazy. I can't wait to like douse myself uh, with this. Actually, I wear this tomorrow to my uh, work and I know I'm going to get a lot of compliments from this, but like I feel this would be more attractive to men, you know, because it's a very sweet fragrance and for some odd reason, the oil is a little bit sweeter. This again, that's why I feel like the, the heaviness on the fruits is a little lesser in the spray version than in the oil version. This to me is like all weather, all day, but of course it would shine more in summer. This can also be used for layering purposes and everything because like if you just want this like fruity floral scent, which is not very strong and not will not overtake another perfume, you can mix this with vanilla, you can mix this with a very strong oud fragrance for example and just make the oud perfume like a bit lighter you can also mix it with the profuse <laughs> you can mix everything with the profuse <laughs> and i know i've given this uh, to a celebrity i i don't know why i'm thinking miley cyrus but normally when i think of fruity perfumes or was it taylor swift i think i would given it to taylor swift and i'm going to give this to taylor swift next i have a perfume that i've been using for years and years and years i shamelessly bought this from a petrol station and I didn't care. I was like, whatever. I never heard of this perfume before. I never heard of this perfume brand before. This is your Lamsa Thariya by Arabiyat. When I purchased this, it was literally, this perfume was only available in petrol stations, in the convenience store of petrol station. And I purchased it. And ever since then, I've been purchasing this. Now, of course, it's available on Amazon as well. And now I purchased it from Amazon because on the in, in the petrol station it's sold for a much higher price but it's still there in the petrol station this is the most beautiful fruity cola scent ever people mistaken this for armani c all the time i just feel this is better than armani c the top notes for this are grapes and blackcurrant middle notes of tuberose heliotrope and jasmine and the base notes of musk patchouli and cedar initially that grape and blackcurrant really gives you that cherry cola or fruit cola kind of scent and then the heliotrope starts coming in like super fast along with the tuberose which literally smells like a chewing gum so i feel like it's it smells like a bubble gum being chewed while drinking cola and then slowly slowly the jasmine comes in like you know it has layers like it moves in layers 
but like imagine uh, the bubble gum and with the cola and then the taste of the bubble gum like start keeps reducing and you taste more of the cola and you're somewhere where there are a lot of flowers and stuff and you're smelling flowers. Ultimately, it dries down to a very fruity floral musk and it's a brilliant perfume. For summer, this is strictly for summer. It's a very bubbly, refreshing. Think of having a cold cola drink on a very, very hot summer day. It's scorching hot, you're sweating and then you just like get this cola in a glass bottle, not a tin can. In a glass bottle, it's chilled. You open it and take that first sip, you know, that cooling sensation you get. This perfume makes me feel like that. For that purpose, I'm going to always have this perfume in my collection. I love it. It got 4.26 on Fragrantica and it's considered to be a fruity flora. The celebrity I'd given this to was Megan Fox by, uh, from Jennifer's Body. Like The next one is from Latafa and this is one of my oldest perfumes, I think. Uh, this is Amir Al Oud from... Uh, so this is the Amir Al Oud Intense Oud. And this one is your by the fireplace kind of scent. On Fragrantica, it's got 4.27. The top notes for this are woodsy notes, agarwood, sugar, vanilla, again agarwood, sandalwood, and herbal notes. Literally smells like a very, very, very sweet agarwood with a lot of smokiness. They've not mentioned smokiness. They've mentioned agarwood, agarwood. Maybe it's the incense note of agarwood, you know? I would say this is like agarwood, vanilla, sugar, and incense. This is obviously compared to By the Fireplace. Like from all the dupes that were created for By the Fireplace, I think this one was amazing. And an alternative was from Azdaf and that one was Majdal Sultan. They're not identical and I think Majdal Sultan is not really a dupe for By the Fireplace. But this one was my favorite out of the lot. That time I was really conflicted, which is better, Majdal Sultan or is this one better? A lot of people asked me and then finally I told you guys like, it's a very tough decision, but if I had to choose one from either or, it would be this one. It would be Amir Al Oud, hands down. There's nothing like very complicated about this. If you like smoky oud fragrances that are sweet, go for this one. If you like the perfume by the fireplace, but it has less the woody smoke, it's this one. This is more incensey than the woody smoke. I think this perfume is stunning. They have made a masterpiece. Whether it was trying to copy by the fireplace or not, it created a perfume that's just unique and it smells excellent. It's very, very sweet and agarwood heavy, but the agarwood in this is a cold agarwood, not like the banyadi or poopy uh, agarwood. This is the type of, type of agarwood I like. I like agarwood that smells cold and nice. Like think of literally sitting around a bonfire and you're having dinner with like, you know, barbecue and stuff with your friends and family. Oh my gosh, this would be like the apt perfume to wear there. This would also be very good in formal settings, formal occasions. Uh, frankly speaking, I wear this at home as well. And weirdly enough, I sometimes spray this perfume in my house as well. <laughs> the last one that I wanted to mention was Modest Dirt by Afnan. Of course, it's perfume it exists. I don't know how many bottles I've used up. Oh my gosh, like every time I smell this perfume, I feel like I'm smelling it for the first time and being like taken aback, you know, like it's a femme fatale fragrance. It smells, it's supposed to be duping uh, La Nuit Tresor, but the original one, like the first one before it was reformulated. This has got 4.29 on Fragrantica. The notes for this are top notes of dark chocolate, strawberry, raspberry and cherry. Middle notes of vanilla and spices and the base notes of patchouli, gardenia and musk. Oh my goodness, this perfume is like, mm. so the dark chocolate, it's more of chocolate shaving. So if, don't think of it being like a sweet chocolate bar kind of smelling. It's the chocolate that you use for cooking, the dark chocolate. And you know, it comes in like those shavings, it smells like that. It smells dry, it smells not very sweet, but the sweetness is coming from the fruits. So your strawberry, raspberry and cherry, think of all of those in the opening. That's like the strongest component of this perfume. Then it starts moving to, into a very vanillic kind of scent. And now it becomes more, the chocolate gets a little bit more pronounced once it's mixing with the vanilla. Spices are there as hints. It's not like really overwhelmingly spicy or anything. And then you, in the base notes, you have your patchouli. Patchouli is kind of sweet in this. And then you have gardenia and musk, which, is all, which are also very sweet notes, right? Gardenia would probably be my top most sweet smelling florals, you know? So all in all, it's a very, very seductive perfume. It's a very beautiful fragrance. Men usually love this fragrance on a woman. All women will not like it, I know, because there are a lot of people who don't like, like Lanoui Tresor as well, and I absolutely love that fragrance. I have it.
but of course I have the new formulation so you know I have a small bottle not the big one because that's the only one I could afford I think it's a 30 ml but this is like another perfume of mine I just had to have it in my collection but I I gravitate less towards this and more towards modesta which is like really funny let me just spray this perfume and let's see because modesta has been macerating for long plus this perfume also has been sitting on my shelf for over a year now yeah after the formulation smells a little bit more it doesn't have chocolate first of all if somebody says there's chocolate in that i'm like gonna be wet and it smells very boozy as well modest dough on the other hand feels a little smoky as well like a little incensey that's why i say that reformulated one is very different from the modest dough you know modest dough if you if you have smelled the lanui twist or the original version which i have no idea why they discontinued it I've heard it's because they there were some ingredients that are discontinued or something and now they cannot make the exact composition. But they smell like sisters, like first one, second one, first one, second one, you know. But if I had to choose between the two, I would probably go for the modest. It just has some oomph about it, something weird about it. I layer this normally with choco mask. I know like a lot of people don't like choco mask either, but layering this with choco mask just gives it that added depth of uh, van more vanilla and uh, chocolate. So that concludes our part two of my favorite 10 out of 10 Middle Eastern fragrances. Uh, let me know if any one of these are your favorites as well. I know like a couple of, I'm sure one at least would be your favorite. And if you follow me for the fact that I, my choice and your choice is the same, then probably like 90% of this would be in your collection as well. And you would probably want, because these are like, like old now, you know, they're not like brand new perfumes that you're thinking about buying and stuff. These are, these are like done with, probably like catching dust in your <laughs> cupboards and everything on your shelves or wherever you keep your perfumes. So let me know which ones you still use. I just love these perfumes. Like probably like I'm very proud of this like collection I have, you know. So that's it for today, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.